Good evening. Can we make our way to our seats and get ready to start our evening service? Y'all can stand if y'all don't mind. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful to be here on a Wednesday night? Hallelujah. Our God is faithful. Every time we show up in this place, it never ceases to amaze me how consistent he is, how faithful he is, even in a world that isn't so consistent. He's faithful. He never leaves us nor forsakes us, and he is for us. Hallelujah. We're going to do a couple baptisms tonight. It really, really excites me. The Lord is working. Yes. We're going to have we're going to baptize Brother Carson and Brother Harrison in the name of Jesus. Amen. Something y'all don't know about Brother Carson. Brother Carson, he's going to be a soul winner. Sunday he was talking to me. He was talking to me as he was praising and worshiping about all the people he's trying to get to come to church and people he's going to win to the Lord. That's exciting. The Lord is moving. Amen. Even in a world like it is today, he's using our children to reach the lost. He's going to use our children to reach the broken. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. We have many things we need to pray for. And we're going to get right into prayer. We need to remember Brother Larry in prayer, Brother Skipper, and Sister Terry. And let's remember our country. Our prayers make a difference. They really do. They really do. The Bible says, in all things, whatever so, whatever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. If you believe in the name of Jesus, can you just raise your hand as we pray tonight? Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come to you, Lord. We submit ourselves to you, God. I believe in you and I trust in you, Lord. God, I pray over the elders of our church. I pray for a healing spirit, Lord. God, I pray that you guard our minds, Lord. God, girdle us with truth, Lord. Let us not be deceived. Let nothing in this media, nothing in this world deceive us. Deceive us. Let us hold on to apostolic doctrine. Let us hold on to truth. Let us hold on to holiness. Lord, I pray over our politicians. I pray over our president's decisions, Lord. God, and I just pray over this service. I pray that you lead and guide it and that your anointing is upon it. And it's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen.
Hallelujah. Can we just praise Him for a minute? There's no other name, no other name given among men under heaven by which we must be saved. It's only in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sister Maria, will you testify for just a minute? Amen. Give him a towel, one of them purple ones. Hallelujah. How exciting is this to do this on a Wednesday night? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even on a Wednesday night. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't the Lord good? Amen. Amen. We're so happy that Carson and Harrison are being baptized this evening, and we'd like to invite their family up. We're so glad you all came to experience this great thing, and the boys are excited about it, and, and uh, we couldn't be happier. And we're, the reason why we're doing it earlier than we normally do is so that they can go on back to their class and they don't, we don't have to worry about bringing them back out. But uh, are we excited to have their family with us tonight? Amen. Amen. We're going to baptize Carson first. And uh, um, the Lord is working on these boys' lives and these children's lives. And uh, we're so glad that they've been coming to church with us. And, and they live in a good neighborhood, same one I came up in. And uh, there's some good Holy Ghost working over on that street. And uh, we're going to pray for Carson right now. And I want you to pray with us. Would you pray with us right now? Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Carson. It's a good boy here, Lord. He loves you, wants to live for you, loves to worship you. I pray, God, you'll bless his life in every way. I pray, God, that you'll strengthen him. Let something happen in him tonight. Let something happen in him as he takes on the name of Jesus in baptism. He has high faith. He believes. He understands the word. I pray that you'll bless him, bless his family, all of his brothers and sisters, his mother and daddy. I pray that you bless them, God, according to your plan. It's not accidental that they came here to us, and we believe, God, that you're going to bless them in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord. Okay, hold your hand. And you hold your other hand right here. Right here. Okay. Carson Stewart, upon the confession of your faith and the teaching of the apostles, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Is that exciting to you? All right. You know, stand up. Amen. Amen. He came to me and said, I need to get baptized so I can get all my sins washed away. And I don't think he's got a lot of them, but they're gone, whatever they were. Amen. Hang your robe back. This is Harrison. He hadn't been with us as long as Carson has, but uh, we love him just as much. Amen. Amen. And uh, let me tell you something this rascal did Sunday morning. You scoot up just a little bit, put you. There you go. He, uh, they always come by and shake my hand, hug me. And uh, usually Carson says something like, I'm ready to be baptized or something. He's always wanting to get get baptized and worship and, and everything. Harrison doesn't say quite so much. He just shakes my hand. And, and uh, I was visiting with folks and stuff back there Sunday morning, and I don't know if I can say this or not. You might have to say it for me, Harrison. And he came by and shook my hand and left. Then he come back, and he just stood there, kind of like he was ready to say something. And I was talking to a few people, and they finally got a little opening in there, and he said, hey, Brother GL. I sure am glad you're my preacher. And let me tell you what, just stick a fork in me, I'm done <laughs> after that. Amen. And, uh, and uh, I've been thinking about that ever since. How many times have I told people about that already, honey? That, uh, well, Harrison, I'm glad I'm your preacher too, buddy. I couldn't be happier. 
I want you to help us pray for Harrison right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray over Harrison, same as his brother Carson. I pray, God, that you will bless his life. It's a good boy. He's got a desire to live for you. He's come to us, Lord, because he needs you. You've got your hand on his life. You're blessing him. You're leading him. You have a plan for him. I pray, God, that everything that needs to happen in his life will happen. I pray you give him strength and courage as he makes it through this transition between a boy to a man. And I pray, God, he never forgets what happens in this baptistry tonight. And he fully understands and comes to understand the power of the name of Jesus and soon be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I believe it. It can happen even right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hold your nose. Just like that. Harrison Davenport, upon the confession of your faith, the teaching of the apostles. I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. Make you happy? Yeah. yeah. All right. Come on. Praise the Lord. Can we, can we give God some praise? Come on, let's give him some praise.
an awesome God, a liberty to praise the name of Jesus, baptism in the name of Jesus on a Wednesday night, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, we're getting ready to do offering tonight if we could get the ways to give up there, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, we have Givelify, it is one I use, we say it quite often, but I love it. I've had no problems out of it. We have PayPal, and then we also, uh, then we also have ke- cash and checks can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, 1031 Mill Street, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. The gold pans are for tithing, and the wood ones are for offering. I don't, I don't just tithe and give offerings to expect something in return. Right. This isn't just a legalistic check off the box thing for me, Brother David. What this really is, we have opportunities to help the kingdom grow every day, but this, this is one of those opportunities. This is something that helps us fit into the body of Christ locally, and ultimately as we do it together here, we fit into the body of Christ globally. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't you say this prayer with me tonight? Upon the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Miss our children if River Bend kids would like to come forward. Hallelujah.
want to I want to say real quickly to all the parents and grandparents and what have you, make sure you bring your kids Sunday morning because uh, I don't know about the other school districts, but New Madrid starts school on Monday and we want to pray for our children before they go to school, right? Amen. 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 So make sure make sure that you get them here Sunday because we're going to pray for pray over all of them. Amen. Just want to interject that. Brother Carson, you can lead them back. Thank you. And River Bend ignited. Y'all can head back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Who's excited for what Brother GL has tonight? Amen. Amen. I hope so. I hope so. Amen. What a great spirit's in the house tonight. Amen. And uh, man, we got an incredible congregation, lots of students and children that are here. And uh, we're so excited to be in church on a Wednesday night. And uh, I, I'm really happy. You can't hardly tell our Wednesday crowd from our weekend crowd. Amen. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. I've been told for years that you tell the health of your church by how many show up on midweek. And boy, we have a good crowd here and more coming. Amen. I just let you know, it's my favorite service. I like Bible study as well as I do anything. I always have. And uh, now Sunday, I'm probably going to say Sunday's my favorite service. Because it's just, you know, which, like according to whichever kid asked me right that minute, which one of us is your favorite? Why, well, you are, you know. But uh, Brother Shannon, you want to help me? Does anybody need a handout that didn't get one last week? If you didn't get one last week or else didn't bring yours back this week, I've got 12 or 13 extras here. And I encourage you to take them home with you. Hopefully you won't need them back uh, next time unless we just get to flowing in the Word tonight. But I've been studying this off and on most of the day. And uh, I... Uh, I'm really, really excited about what I feel like the Lord has shown us. Keep your hand up if you need one or you'd like to have one. We may have to make a copy or two. If you're regular and uh, a regular worshiper and someone's a guest, you might share your copy with them and we'll get you one. Uh, um, make sure everybody has one. Um, if not, we can go print some more. We need three more? Okay. All right. Brother Shannon's going to make some copies. Um, if you'll just, we're just going to go ahead and get in the Word. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm grateful I didn't have enough copies. That always makes me feel good. Especially, Brother Jerry, when it's people that didn't get one the first time. Uh, now, I ain't so happy about those that forget. And... Uh, I really ain't happy about those that forget and leave it laying on their seat when they leave. Come on, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> that defeats the purpose. I, I'm just, I, I just say that a little bit tongue-in-cheek. It's really not a joke at all. Uh, the coolest thing in the world's going to happen is when everybody says, I love you, I enjoy talking to you, I'm glad to see you at church, but I'm on my way home, I want to watch it again with my hand out. There are some folks that do that. Amen? And it's, it's not because I'm the best preacher or teacher in the world, probably top two or three, but uh, no, I'm just teasing. That's just, that is tongue-in-cheek. But folks, if the word comes over this desk, it doesn't matter if a donkey gets up here. And sometimes I ain't much different than that. All right? But the word that goes across this desk is for you. And it has a purpose. Y'all know what that purpose is? Build faith. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All right? It is essential to hear the word of God because the Bible says, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they be saved without hearing the word? Okay, faith cometh by hearing, and how shall they hear without a preacher, and how shall they preach except they be sent? It's exactly what it says, but uh, let's get into the Word. 
we, we, uh, we're so happy to baptize those babies. And I, I won't call them babies in front of them, but that's, that's when, you, when you get the name of Jesus on a child, they're not going to forget that. They're not going to forget it. And they, they could tell Sister Casey, because we don't baptize people for the fun of it. All right? And we, we don't baptize them in any old willy nilly name. We baptize everybody that's going to get baptized in this church. You're going to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, because that's what the book says. Okay? I want to really get that clear. I felt it a while ago while we were worshiping. There is never anybody baptized in the Bible in any other name than Jesus Christ. No one, biblically, was ever baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. No one. Every historical, religious, and otherwise book that you read about baptism says... The early, it is very clear that the early church baptized in the name of Jesus or in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Trinitarian form of baptism, which is the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, is not even mentioned in history till over 150 years after the death of Jesus Christ. The first time it's ever even mentioned is around 185 A.D. by Tertullian. Not one of the disciples that heard Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 28 baptized any other way than the name of Jesus Christ. It's not a matter of argument, but let me tell you this, it is a hill to die on. All right, going to be a good night up in here. Let's talk about wisdom. Are you ready? Do you, have you figured out yet we could all use more of it? We could all use more wisdom. Well, I've got some things. Y'all ready to go tonight? I've got some things to unpack. I've done added to these notes a few times. Got some things to unpack. In God, wisdom is the infinite comprehension of all that is or might be. In man, wisdom is the practical use of knowledge. All right? It's knowing what to do and doing it. The practical use of knowledge. Holy Ghost-filled people, which is Christ in you, there's a combining of the two. When you have the Spirit of God within you, the attributes of God are available to you anytime. Got that? Christ in you, the Holy Ghost can operate in his fullness in you at any time. I guess I got to stay there for a little bit. Brother David, it is true. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and Jesus said, I'm with you now, but I shall be in you. All right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are all one. All right, the spirit of God that is within us is the same spirit that brought Christ out of the grave. So when we're filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that's why Jesus told the disciples and us by extension, the things that I do shall you do also and greater than these because I go to my Father. All right, the, it was the plan of God for our Holy Ghost filled people to make a bigger impact than Jesus did. I know we don't like to think about that, but it's true. And he says in Mark, the 16th chapter, these signs shall follow them that believe. All right? They'll lay hands. That's Holy Ghost-filled people, not just preachers. They lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. They'll speak with new tongues. If they pick up any deadly thing, it will not harm them. But contrary to popular opinion, that does not mean you bring a bunch of snakes into church and handle them. We don't believe that either. That's nonsense. Because the book also says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. All right? And I know there's some people that joke about Pentecost and snake handling. Tell them it's a lie, at least on 1031 Mill Street. So there's a combining of the wisdom of God and the practical application of that wisdom in me. Got me? 
the one that knows everything, Brother Jerry, wants to influence me, what kind of fool would have this much potential at their fingertips and decide, I think I'm just going to do it my way anyhow? Are you with me on that? That, in a nutshell, is the difference between being right and being wrong, in a nutshell. Being wrong is doing it your way. Right? We, now, we, we went a long time studying about there can, there's only room for one king in our life. It's either him or me. And if it's me, I really ain't the king anyway. All right? There's only room for one king in our life. There's only room for one throne, and that's the one the Lord sets on. Okay. Let's move along. And the wisdom we're talking about tonight is having the good sense to follow after the leading of the Spirit rather than the flesh and trusting that the way of the Spirit is much more informed than I am, right? Because he has infinite comprehension. I don't. I'm finite. We are finite. Our only connection to the infinite is through the power of the Holy Ghost. And even if I don't see the reasoning behind the leading of the Spirit, and I want you to know something. There's not a person in this room right now that's not to some degree being led of the Spirit. Not person ever shows up to the house of God on accident. Okay. Even if I don't see the reasoning behind the leading of the Spirit, I'm wise enough to do what the Spirit wants to anyway. And when I do, it'll show in how I live my life and in the decisions I make. Remember I said this last week, only half joking. Many times, we're the last one to figure out how unwise we really are. Chances are, if you're making unwise decisions, everybody in your life knows it before you do. Because it shows. But we get blinded. Right? We get. Let me tell you something. Putting the welfare of your children and your grandchildren above the will of God is unwise. Trying to make people happy does never trump the will of God. It's always unwise. Woo. Now we learned in verse 14 that wisdom shows up. It isn't enough to say we are wise, but wisdom shows up. And earthly wisdom manifests itself in bitter envying and strife. Now both of those terms in, involve some degree of measuring ourselves among ourselves. You can't be envious of somebody unless you have first decided they got something better than you do. Okay? And strife. We're fixing to talk about that in just a little bit. Strife. Both of those, envying and strife, are both terms that involve some measure of competition. Now, I'm going to say this again. I'm preaching it all the time, and some of you will testify to the fact that I will correct you right on the spot, so be prepared. There is no they or them or y'all in the Riverbend Pentecostals. It's all us and we and ours. So when you say, well, y'all did this, I'm going to correct you. I don't care how old you are. I'm your pastor. And it is contrary to what the Lord is doing in this church for there to be two sides in this sanctuary. Not room for it. If there are, somebody's wrong. Let me tell you what. It ain't going to be me. If it is, well, that went over like a lead balloon. <laughs> if it is, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to tell you I was wrong. I, I apologize. Listen, I'm stubborn and I'm ornery 
but I ain't holding on to something. If I did something wrong, you can ask my wife, you can ask my children, you can ask my mama, you can ask anybody. I'll say, I'm sorry. I was dumb. Messed up. I'm, I apologize. All right, let's all learn to do it. Let's all learn to do it, Sister Amanda. No, I'm just kidding. I was seeing if she was paying attention. That was all that was. No, she gave me that look that said, I ain't sorry, but you're going to be. We're going to explore the characteristics of wisdom that's from above later in this study, but let's unpack this earthly wisdom just a little bit more. James 3 and 15 says this wisdom, and it's talking about the wisdom that is fueled by envy, strife, and personal glory. This wisdom fueled by envy, strife, and personal glory. Let me tell you something else, too. We got to make sure we get rid of trying to elevate people above the team. I'm going to let that sink in just for a little bit. Because a lot of times that is fueled by other motivation. Thinking that if I do it for them, then somebody's going to do it for me. We got to get to a place. Y'all remember the doctor? Y'all remember the doctor? He'd been cleaning the commodes for two years. The pastor didn't even know it. Remember we talked about a value-based culture? And the doctor, a doctor was showing up at church before 7 o'clock in the morning and cleaning the commodes for two years and nobody ever knew it. It's called serving the kingdom of God. That's where we're headed. It's already happening. It's already happening. But we're about to be completely delivered from saying, well, I did this, or I did this, or I did this, because there ain't none of that. It's all we did it, because we're part of the body. Now, it's not about, don't get me all lined up into that socialization and stuff. That's not what it's all about. It's not what it's about, because there's going to be eyes, and there's going to be hands, and there's going to be the more prominent uh, parts of the body, and then there's going to be the ligaments, Sis Sister Jane. Right? Okay, I'm just trying to be real right now. All right? If the Lord knows you got a problem with your ego, he's going to cause it to come to the surface. He's going to cause you to get jealous of somebody. And we're going to be glad when that happens. Right? Why are we going to be glad when that happens? Because we can fix it. If it comes out, we can fix it. If there's something that comes out in us that's contrary to Scripture and to the Word of God and the Spirit of God, we need to say first, thank you, Jesus. Now, let's get, let's get that fixed. All right. That wisdom descendeth not from above, does not come from heaven, but is earthly, sensual, and are you ready for this? Devilish. Earthly means belonging to the earth. It is birthed here. It is fostered by carnal influence, and it gets you earthly validation. Sensual is simply unspiritual, feeling-based, and it gets you personal validation. And then devilish, are you ready? It is demonic, which means resembling a demon or influenced by one. And remember I told you in Isaiah 14, what did the devil say? The prophet said, O Lucifer, how thou that were exalted have fallen because you said in your heart, I will ascend above God. So this wisdom that's from the earth, when it says, I believe I'm smarter than God, is actually under the influence of hell. Now by its nature, this kind of wisdom, well, I'm fixing to expose some things. Are you ready? I'm going to bring some stuff out. We're fixing to, are y'all cool if we just take like two or three minutes and pray a little bit in the middle of Bible study? 
Because what better time is there to just say, all right, let's get this worked out right now than right now? Because a lot of times, Brother Shannon, if something clicks in my mind during church and I say I'm going to get that fixed, guess what happens? Forget all about it. All right? Because I, I want us to be able to, to grow a little bit tonight. What do you think about that? All right. Earthly, sensual, and devilish, these are by nature antichrist. Because it says the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy... And that's what envy and strife, in a, in a manner of speaking, envy and strife are actually fueled. And it sounds like a little bit of a stretch, Brother Jerry, but it's true. When you envy somebody or you're jealous of somebody, the Bible says jealousy is cruel as the grave. And at its basis form, it means I wish you were dead. Uh, uh, is there anybody in here that you feel happy when you get jealous? Oh, it's a mean feeling. It's an ugly feeling. It's a nasty feeling. It's not a virtuous feeling. And often when we feed it, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And you can be jealous of Brother David and end up being mean to everybody in your whole world. Because it's of the devil. All right. Everybody okay? Y'all understand what I mean by earthly, sensual, and demonic? Okay, that's wisdom that's of the earth. That is wisdom. Remember Brother Shannon and, and uh, uh, Brother Cody and maybe some more were in our class last night and Spurgeon talked about living your whole life with a pistol in your pocket looking for targets every day. Let me see if I can find something I don't like. Let me see if I can find somebody I don't like. Let me see if I can find something wrong with them. You know what? I've lived like that before. First, let me tell you this. Ain't no shortage of things to find. Because we're imperfect people in a fallen world. But we're going to move away from that tonight. If you dissect every word the preacher says... You're going to find something that rub your fur the wrong way. And the brother Arnold just says, if it rubs you the wrong way, turn around. <laughs> Say that one more time. Oh, no. No, I'm not talking about a literal pistol. No, I'm not talking about a literal pistol. I'm talking about when you walk into a room, just see what, what all can you find wrong. What all can you find you don't like? Because you know you and your cronies are going to get together and y'all going to talk about it after a while and you don't want to be without something to talk about. That wisdom don't come from God. You and I have not been appointed the porch sweeper of everybody that we come in contact with. Man, I, I feel like I'm causing trouble tonight. Do, do y'all feel like that? Huh? This is the world we live in. I'm about to wade off into it, all right, with both feet, and I don't even have my gum boots on, all right? But we're going to get better. We're going to get right, and we just think we're seeing revival. When we get ourselves completely in order, all right. Y'all understand, that's part of what the, the Bible says he chastens those that he loves, if I got something messed up in my life, I want it fixed. Okay, I'm coming. James 3 and 16. I may, I may just camp out here. We, we may have to do this another night because this is so powerful. You, I'm going to paint you a picture, and it's not going to be hard for anybody to see. There's a very strong contemporary application to James 3 and 16. Look what it says. For where envying and strife is. Now, envying at its basis form means jealous, and it means burning on the inside. It is 
the concept is similar to a pressure cooker where your antagonistic feelings towards somebody else's success or blessings or new pickup truck builds and builds and builds and builds and builds until it explodes. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to learn to deal with that when it's just a spark. Let me tell you, anybody know how to do that? Make a habit of thanking God for every good thing that happens to everybody you know. The devil can't get a word in edgewise if every time somebody gets blessed or every time somebody does good or every time somebody gets a new suit of clothes and they look nice in it. Compliment them. Brag on them. Thank God for blessing them. Especially if it's your propensity to be the other way. If you know, let me tell you something. If, if we have a tendency to struggle with envy and strife, we know it. It ain't a mystery. So just cut it off at the pass. Pray blessings on everybody you think of. Thank God for every person in your life and every good thing he's done for everybody else. All right? Don't get jealous of them because they made A's on the test. Study harder. Them making a good grade on the test ain't got nothing to do with you. Nothing. Okay? I use that because probably ain't none of us in school. But burning on the inside. Now listen what strife is. Are you ready? Strife is getting riled up about something. Here's the definition. Selfish ambition seeking for followers. It is an assembly of factions. It is getting a plan or an idea or a contrary opinion and go around until you can find you a crew to join up with you. Oh, goodness. Say, well, you just think you're talking about the church. I'm not exactly talking about the church, but I am talking about the world we live in, and unfortunately, the church has become a part of it one way or the other. All right. Let me unpack a little bit more. Can I say this again? Strife. Selfish ambition seeking for followers. An assembly of factions, which means you've got one group that thinks this way and another group that thinks this way and you can't like each other because you want to tear them down. Come on, folks. Let's not all sit there and tiptoe through the tulips like it ain't. It's all over for social media. It's in your job. I'm telling you right now, everybody you know has picked a side. We tonight better bring ourselves off of whichever team we decided to be on. Because if we picked a team, we picked an earthly motivated team. Some of us don't like that right now, but it's the truth. Where was it born at? Right here, Brother Jerry, right here. It was born here. But you know what? We have become addicted and attracted to drama. And this has fueled right into our, we get to be keyboard heroes. And Oh, Lord, have mercy. This is what the Bible says. For where envying strife is. Do you wear a mask or you do not wear a mask? Do you take the vaccine or do you not take the vaccine? Let me tell you what I think. You do whatever you feel like you need to do. That's exactly what I think. And I'll stand shoulder to shoulder with you and fight for your ability to do that. 
But I won't damn and condemn nobody for feeling a different way. And especially, God have mercy if that nonsense finds its way in the church. <laughs> it's the truth, because look here what the Bible says. I may, I'm, am, I, am I doing all right, Brother David? Huh? I, I sit here thinking about thinking about this. Well, this is taking place. Now. When you think about that, it, it's internal. It is. It's it's the inner man. Yeah. And that's where the conflict is created at. And uh, my Bible goes back to Romans seven twenty three. It says, "But I see another law in my members." Uh huh. Warring against the law of my mind. Yep. I know what's right. Yep. And bringing me into captivity. Yep. That's it. So it's an internal conflict that's being created by this. And I got to make a decision to not follow the way of the world, even if that's the only two choices there are. Because there's always a third choice. You know what that way is? The way of the Lord. Because look at this. Where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Now, before I unpack that a little bit, what do we automatically know when the Bible says where envying and strife is, there is confusion? What do we know automatically? God ain't got nothing to do with it because he's not the author of confusion. He is a God of order, not confusion. Say, well, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know, you know, you don't know who to believe. You hear this one time and you hear this another time. Ladies and gentlemen, are we really that far from God? We better be seeking the will of God if we want to go to Walmart. Sure enough, better be seeking the will of God if we want to do something with our life. Oh, I guess I'm causing trouble. You know what, but I'm right in the Holy Ghost. This is the will of God. Y'all know I've done been having this for like six weeks. Okay? Look at here. If ever there was a time for the church to come out from among them and be ye separate, it's now. I said it's now. We cannot choose a side established on earthly wisdom no matter how convincing it sounds. It's okay to say I'm right because I am. If you're going to follow the news, you're going to lose your mind. You talk about yo-yoing. And please, I, I mean no disrespect to anybody, but you can get 20 doctors to say one thing and 20 doctors to say another thing. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get on our face and whatever the Lord leads us to do, do it. And if it's that important, I trust me, he'll let you know. I know I'm in, in the Holy Ghost. I know that I'm telling the truth. And this just happened to be what the Lord led me to a month and a half ago. Look here. We cannot, the Bible says, set your affections on things above. That word affection simply means your mind and your thoughts. How about God? What do you think about anything I'm about to do or not do? The outcome is confusion and every evil work, which, listen, which leads to an overwhelming atmosphere of distrust and suspicion of everyone and everything. Because when you pick a side in the world, you're all, if you go here, you're actually saying, I'm against them. The church ain't got room for that. Because guess what? Sunday morning... The Lord's going to bring about 12 or 14 guests in here and half of them's going to be from one side and half of them from the other side and you know what they got to find here? Peace. Sure, peace is a byproduct of unity. We're going to have peace because we don't serve a God of confusion and 
above anything, this better be a safe place. And it is, it is, we live in a world. Matter of fact, we're almost teaching our kids to don't trust anybody. You think for once, let me tell you something. I wish it wasn't so, but almost all of our relationship with God is formulated off of our relationship with others. If you don't, if you don't love people, you don't love God either. Okay? I'm talking about from the very basic. From the very basic, from the smallest child. And if all that's going on in our homes is confusion and every evil work, guess who ain't on the throne? Am I okay? Everybody with me? Huh? I'm just a little nervous. Okay? But I, I'm looking for wisdom that comes from above. Now, all right. Everybody cool? Any comments, questions, thoughts? Anybody, anybody think we're all right? We're, we're heading in the right direction? We got to get delivered from that. So how about let's just pray right now for a couple of minutes, just a couple of minutes. And here's what, what, what do we need to be saying? Help me look to you instead of to the earth. Help me. There's, there's a, oh, Lord, I could preach right now, but there was a king named Asa in the Bible, and he feared the Lord, and he served the Lord till he fell out with him. And then the Bible says Asa got diseased in his feet, and he refused to ask God for help. And you know what happened? He died of a diseased foot. We better seek after the Lord and say, Lord, if... I've been establishing my stance on anything based upon somebody's worldview. I'm sorry. And I'm asking you to order my steps in your word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Because, Brother Jerry, when I'm born again, the Bible says you are not of the world, but of the Father. And all that's in the world, God have mercy, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life ain't of God either. So if we're going around with our fingers in our suspenders, claiming our way is right, we're violating the law of God. Lord, we love you tonight. We appreciate you. God, and I come to you right now as honest and open as I can be, and I'm asking you, Lord, if I've been establishing, and I'm guilty of it, sometimes, sometimes, especially based upon if I care about this person or if I don't care about this person, I try to, try to be a little sympathetic toward them or toward that one. I ask you to forgive me for all that stuff, Lord. Forgive me for being persuaded or swayed or anything at all by, by world views and world thoughts, whether it be about war, whether it be about this virus, or whether it be about about the poor, whether it be about politics, whatever it is, God, I don't want to make my stance and take my stance based upon somebody's earthly wisdom and somebody's earthly values, but God, I want to be led by the Spirit, so I pray you'll order my steps in your word. Lord, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, let me be from a above and not beneath. Lord, let me be led by the Spirit and not the flesh. I ask you to straighten me up on that area. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, let's move into the Word real quickly. Verse 17. According to many, Brother Billy just referenced it, this is the... Does everybody understand what I've taught so far? Okay. Okay. If you go to work tomorrow and you get in a fight with somebody, 
Y'all laughing. It's happening all the time. All the time. I heard something the other day about lifelong friends. Got on different sides of this main issue. Won't even speak to one another no more. Got a good friend. He, he just mentioned something about getting a vaccination. Got attacked. Been getting double-barreled with text messages and Facebook posts and everything. That's a bunch of nonsense. Especially somebody that's influenced by the Spirit. I, I'm not up here on the platform one way or the other. Y'all understand that. All right? Y'all people got some good sense. And after tonight, we're going to have more wisdom. Ain't that right? And more faith. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, according to some, James 3 and 17 is the defining passage of the book of James. Because it says, but, now what does but mean to us? Conversely, contrasting, opposite to that wisdom that's from the earth, that's sensual, that's devilish, but the wisdom that is from above. You see, there's a way of doing things under heavenly influence, and we need to learn what that is, and we need to learn to use it in all of our dealings. Okay. I hope our guests come back. I preach good Sunday. I promise. The wisdom that is from above, but tells us that it's the opposite of that which is from earth, which is from my feelings or which is from hell. This wisdom I'm talking about right now is the wisdom in lesson number one that I realized I'm lacking in. Okay, I'm going to pack it out, unpack it again. The wisdom that's from above is first. What do you think it means when it says is first? It's the primary thing. It's the most important thing. It's the step that if you don't get to that step, the rest of them ain't even, you're not doing any good. What, based upon Earth, the depth, what is the two defining characteristics of earthly wisdom? I've said it like a thousand times. Envy and strife. Where envy and strife is, there's confusion. So we know, first of all, the wisdom that comes from above is pure. Guess what it ain't got? No envy or strife. None. All right, if we struggle with that, if we struggle with questioning every time somebody buys a new boat or something, if the first thought in your mind is, reckon how they did that, how they going to pay them bills now? I could have one of them too if I wanted to go into debt up to my ears. Am I right or am I right? All right, if we catch ourselves doing that, Brother Jerry, we've already rolled into earthly wisdom. We're, we're messed up. Got to stop. Time out. Stop. I got to talk to the Lord. I'm messed up. Okay? It's first pure without any envying and strife. Now, I want to dig a little bit right now. Based upon what this says, I'm going to meddle. Are you ready? Based upon this, the original meaning of pure, when I read this, I promised to goodness, I sat back in my seat and I went like, oh, in my notes, I wrote, whoa. The original meaning of the word pure, its definition is clean or chaste, but the original meaning of the word pure is prepared for worship. Now, why did I say, whoa? Let me tell you something. The first thing earthly wisdom is going to take from you is your worship. Why is that? Because you can't determine his worth if you're consumed with establishing yours. 
And worship comes from the root words worth-ship. When I worship, I feel the Holy Ghost. When I worship, I am declaring his worth to me. What he is worth to me is displayed in my worship. And the first thing envying and strife is going to do is steal my worship. Let that just sink in just a minute. The pure is prepared for worship in a condition prepared for worship. How much more clear could it be? The first characteristic of heavenly wisdom is being prepared for worship. And the first attribute of heavenly wisdom is acknowledging that without him, I'm nothing. So let's get some... Oh, I feel Jesus. Let's get something established right now. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. And when they start singing about Jesus and our God is awesome, he can move mountains. You know what's right then, brother Cody? I get to do what I'm prepared for. I'm prepared for worship. I acknowledge and I recognize whether it's, oh, I want to see him or his goodness is running after me. You know who they're singing about? The one that I put all worth in. The one that I put all value in. And I ain't got time to be jealous or envious or strife. I'm not looking for a crew. The only group I'm looking for is the one that says Jesus is Lord. I don't know if that's got in or not. Let me tell you something. If you don't ever clap and you don't ever say thank you, Jesus, and you don't ever lift your hands in worship, you better evaluate where you're coming from. Oh, Lord. You sure can. Yep. Wonderful point. So you know what that means? The laws of earth and heaven, they ain't changed. You want to know why? Same ones motivating them. The enemy, who didn't come for nothing but to kill, steal, and that's a great point, Brother Billy, a wonderful point. This was the church in the first 15 years of existence, and the enemy ain't changed his tricks. You know why he ain't changed his tricks? Because they still work. And you know what's happening tonight? Is we're coming to the realization, you know what? I ain't nobody's chump no more, rascal. You better get out of my mind. You better get out of my house. You better get out of my mouth. You better get out of my home. I don't belong to you. I don't, you don't have anything to do with me. You're not the Lord of me. You're not the boss of me. And the blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. It's not my righteousness against the enemy. It's the righteousness of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I want you to know his way is perfect. It's not good, it's perfect. So if you're struggling with worship, it's a purity problem. And the main two culprits are envy and strife. Now, how many of you know, how many of you will acknowledge that as soon as you get in your feelings about something, you want somebody to know, and you're going to get together with three or four or five, there's been, oh, don't y'all make me start calling stuff out. I've heard the Husband Haters Club get together a few times. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That's a stench in the nostril of God. He blessed marriage. It was his idea. Let me tell you something, I've never, ever, 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 ever counseled a husband and wife that was having problems. 
that did not come into my office and they was both on different teams when they walked in the door. Not every time. I've told every one of them, this is not a competition. Well, she did this or he did this and every time I, no, let's stop it right now. You know what we're dealing with? Oh, we need repentance first. From who? Both of you. Because you're fighting an earthly battle. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You think the devil is not just rejoicing when husbands and wives are fussing and cussing at one another all the time? You know why? He don't have to do jack squat. He just sits back and does like this and says, get after it, baby. But tonight, you know something, Sister Callie? Tonight, revelation's flowing. And I am not ignorant of his devices. That's what the book says. Oh, let me go. All right. Everybody cool? The first thing is it's pure. It's in a condition prepared for worship. Second, peaceable. Let me tell you what that is. By definition, God's gift of wholeness, which results from knowing the Lord's will and doing it. It's a facet of the wisdom from heaven that lets us acknowledge Philippians 2 and 13, which says, it is the Father which worketh in you both to will and do of his good pleasure. How do you get pure? How do you get this wisdom that's first of all pure? Now, y'all got your hand out there, and a lot of y'all have been in every one of these classes, and where did we start in the beginning? If any of you lack wisdom, so the first thing I need to realize, Brother Shannon, here's how simple it is. You know what? I don't think this is me. I think I'm missing. I think I got some of them other characteristics in me more than these. So what do we do? Go to the Lord and tell him, I'm kind of messed up. Now you said in your word that you giveth to all men liberally. What does that word liberally mean? Abundantly, overflowing, actually more than you need because he's the God of 12 baskets left over and seven baskets left over. He's just going to show you I got more than enough. Huh? And Man, I preached about this for like 45 minutes and y'all shouted and y'all clapped and upbraideth not. That does, that means if I decide I've got wisdom, I don't, that I'm lacking wisdom, I don't have to get perfect and then go to the Lord and say, hook a brother up. But I realize I messed up and I go to the Lord and say, I need some wisdom and why is he gonna give it to me? Because when I get wisdom, I'm gonna get right. Y'all remember that now? Okay, he doesn't do a character evaluation. If you come asking for the right thing, he's going to give it to you. Because first of all, it says I know, that's where my heart is. Second of all, he knows how powerful wisdom from heaven is. All right. So James 1 and 5, ask. Then it's gentle. That means fair and reasonable. In its simplest form, it means willing to compromise to keep the peace. Now you understand that's not compromising your integrity and that's certainly not compromising the word of God. But that is letting somebody else make the dumplings. Everybody knows you make the best, that you open the best can of corn this side of the Mississippi River. But next time, if Lulu wants to do it, let her knock herself out. All right now, we got a little tight. It doesn't have to be my way. And there's no rule anywhere that says at least once in a while I need to get my way. 
Matter of fact, I need to be delivered from wanting in my way, period. Because my way wasn't the right one. <laughs> All right. Reasonable. I'm going to get done. I'm going to get done tonight. Reasonable. You know what? This is incredible. I hope, are y'all writing stuff down? I know Brother David's got like a book road over there. All right. Reasonable. You know what that means? That means I was already on board before you asked me. Oh, Lord, I'm going to tie it into Sunday. You know what that means? That means, hey, you forgot. I killed the ox and I burnt the yoke. I was already in it to win it before you ever asked me to get on board. I was already on your team before you asked me to be a part of it. I was already sold out before you asked me to be. That's reasonable. Already on board before being asked to join. Is this not incredible? Huh? All right, look at here. And easy to be entreated. I'm fixing the double barrel right now. I want you to be ready for this. And easy to be entreated. Now there's been a spirit that has been here since longer than I've been alive that's got to be broke. And that is a spirit of being prepared to have your feelings hurt. You know what? When you feel like you walk in somewhere, somebody's going to hurt your feelings, you know how you already are? On the edge, defensive, tensed up. This is the exact opposite of that. It, it easily entreated means I'm planning on forgiving you before you hurt me. I don't think that's sinking in. What? Well, Great peace have they. But you think about, you're exa we got to live by that. But you think about this. Instead of showing up ready to be mad, say, I don't know if we do that. Oh, yes, we do, because I've been guilty of it. I already know they ain't going to stay and help clean up. They're going to be first in line, fill their belly up be patting their fat tail going outside the door. And I'm going to be cleaning up all by myself. Oh, I can't be that real? Huh? Come on now. I, here's what I do. First off, we do need to learn some manners. Don't be first in line at every church dinner. Let me tell you something else too. Youngins, you wait till the grown folks tell you to go. If I'd have went first to every pot, any, any potluck, even one time, I wouldn't be here today. My daddy would have took me out. You found you a place to sit over somewhere and you behaved, and when daddy said you could go, you went to the dinner line. I, I'm causing trouble, ain't I? But if I set off in the corner and say, look at them go again. Look at them, first one ever. Probably won't be no taters left when I get there. Look at that big old pile on their plate. Huh? But how about if I show up ready to say, you know what, take the whole pot. I got enough money to buy some more. I can make them if I want them. I ain't here to get fat anyway. I'm here for the fellowship. I'm just telling you, it's, it's a wisdom that says, you know what? It ain't a big deal if I don't get nothing but the neck out of the fried chicken. It ain't a big deal. I'm ready to let them have it all. I'm just happy they're here. It's called wisdom that comes from heaven. And if I trust the Lord enough, there'll always be enough groceries because he turns a boy's lunch into feeding 5,000 if it has to. Come on, somebody now. Y'all with me? Ready to forgive instead of being wounded. Full of mercy. You know what that means? Looking around to see who I can have compassion on. Who looks like they're having a problem. Ready. And good fruits. Oh, Lord. 
Y'all remember this from elements class. We taught it like seven weeks in a row. Actions or deeds that reflect a proper partnership with Jesus Christ. Because John 15 tells us what? He's the vine and I'm the branch. And if I abide in him, I will be fruitful. Look at here. Without partiality. I trampled on this just a little bit earlier because it means sold out, loyal, not double-minded or double-hearted, without reservation. And then without hypocrisy means sincere, without any guile or shadiness of any kind, no pretense or putting on from a pure heart. It's almost like bookends. It's first of all pure and last of all pure. It's very similar. How do I get it? How do I get it? Ask. James 1 and 5. Ask. James 3 and 18. I'm closing. Here's what the King James Version says. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. I like the New Living Translation. Did I give that to you, Sister Heidi? Yeah, I probably didn't. I can't be giving everything away. Look what the New Living Translation says. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. If you want to know why all hell is breaking loose in your life, you better first go look in the planter and see what you've been putting in the ground. You can't be functioning on earthly wisdom expecting a heavenly reward. Because, Brother Billy, you cannot plant corn expecting soybeans to come up. So, Now that we know, we have to make a decision. You know what that decision is? What is it? I need to talk to the Lord. I need to take it to the Lord. I need to get figured out about me. Because we've been already, listen, I know us. I know some of us I've grown up with, some of us I've been around since Moby Dick was a sardine. Okay? We done been thinking about people we know ain't got it all together. And most of them wasn't me. Huh? We done been thinking, ooh wee, I wonder if he's looking at her. You know what? I need to pray for her because I heard her do that last week. Brother Kevin, you said it right. There ain't but one place we need to look to get this stuff right, and that's in the mirror. Because if I get me right, and you get you right, you know what's going to happen, Brother David? We're on the same team because we got the same motivation. We got the same download going on. We're connected to the same vine. Stand with me if you would. Hey, you can. Yep. That's right. That's right. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something how to get delivered from that. Come here. Come here. Sit down right there. I'm serious. Sit down right there. Now tell me who you see. Nobody but me and the Lord. I, that's the truth. I'm, I'm not throwing rocks at you. How, how many people in here have I told you, get away from the back and get to the front because there's a different church service there? Let me tell you something. When revival hits, if it wasn't for COVID, there wouldn't be a whole lot of folks sitting in the back because before COVID came, this was all filled up because there were some folks that believe what I preach is true. And if I ain't never preached nothing that was true before, there's a different church service going on on the front row than there is on the back row. Ain't that right, Sister Sheila? Uh-huh. Thank you, Brother Kevin. Don't you get up. Don't you get up. 
I can't have you going back there causing no trouble. Because <laughs> if you get on your phone on the front row, I'm going to bust you out. <laughs> Do you love the Lord? Yeah. Uh, let's thank him for what he's given us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, we're going to have elements class. 11 o'clock, Brother Tim Bozzelli is going to be preaching for us. And he is a firecracker. He is a licensed counselor. He's a pastor. He has a practice as far as helping people with grief, helping people with addiction recovery. And he called me three months ago and said, I was mowing the yard today, and God gave me a word for your church. And uh, so and he, I talked to him this week. He said, it's still brewing. I still got it. And uh, so we're expecting great things in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. And we... We don't want to get Brother Bazelli and put him to work Sunday morning, but we are going to be frequent collaborators with him. We're going to have him here a lot because he's going to help us. Amen. Addiction recovery, family counseling. Uh, he's got tons of, of material getting ready to publish on grief, on dealing with grief. So he's an incredible man. I spent about three hours with him in St. Louis a few weeks ago, and uh, we've been on the phone, and uh, he, he is super excited about being here, and we're excited about having him. So you don't want to miss it Sunday morning at 11, okay? Any more announcements? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Drop in baby shower Sunday at 2 o'clock for Sister Eric over here. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. If you want to help with the cleaning, you need to. There ought to be more people wanting to do it than they're already doing it that needs to do it. Can I get an amen? amen. It's the truth. So if you want to help with the cleaning list, uh, let Sister Judy know. Uh, and uh, pray for those that aren't here. We've got several out of town. But what, look around. What a great congregation, man. We're bumping 100 tonight. We're bumping 100. You count the kids and everything. Y'all seen how many youngins got up and went back there? What a great blessing. What a blessing. Uh, thank you. We love you. You're dismissed. Make sure you shake hands with our guests. Let them know we're glad to see them if they feel comfortable doing that. If not, just say how y'all